Greetings YouTube. In this video I'm going to show you how I took up the sleeves on this lined jacket. This was an awkward alteration because this jacket had functional buttonholes. I'll show you how I dealt with these. Shortening the sleeves on a lined jacket can be a daunting task, but I'm going to take you through this step by step. And I will leave handy timestamps in the description below, which you can refer back to as you work through the process. So let's get started. The correct sleeve length will differ between a men's jacket and a woman's jacket. The sleeve on a men's jacket should end just above the wrist bone, and the sleeve on a woman's jacket should come to the lower joint of the thumb or just below the wrist bone. We put our jacket on and we place a pin where our cuff should end. I have my pins in place and quite a lot of length has to come off. I measure from the pin to the edge of the cuff. It's two and a half inches. I mark this measurement all the way around. I do this for both sleeves. Now we need to remove any stitching, starting with the buttons. We keep our buttons in a safe place so we can sew them back on later. Now we need to unpick the buttonholes. Even if you have functional buttonholes like this, you still undo the stitching and we'll close them back up later. Put in a safety pin about halfway up the sleeve, making sure to go through both the outer fabric and the lining. This will help prevent the lining from twisting later on. Now we carefully unpick the lining and the hem, then repeat for the other sleeve. I've unpicked all the stitches and the seams. The sleeve is opened up and the lining is detached from the main jacket. We can keep this out of the way for now. Now we need to cut off our excess fabric. Here's our hemline from our old cuff. And we see we have a seam allowance of about one and a half inches. We mark this down from the line we drew where we put in our pin. And I go around the cuff marking out the new seam allowance. This top line will be the new hemline of our cuff and the bottom line will be our seam allowance. We cut along the bottom line on both sleeves. We'll keep hold of this strip of fabric because we'll need it later. Before I turn up my cuffs I need to deal with these buttonholes. If your jacket had fake buttonholes you can skip this step and go ahead to the next timestamp. For each sleeve I've cut out a patch of interfacing that will cover all the buttonholes. You can also use repair patches or any kind of fusible webbing. We place our patch of interfacing over the holes on the inside of the cuff and we press it down with an iron. Now we've covered our holes from the inside fusing the threads together and from the outside we're going to go over the holes with a zigzag stitch. On our sewing machine we set our stitch width to its highest setting and the stitch length to its lowest. We go over each buttonhole with a zigzag stitch, go back over reversing direction and back once more. Now we've covered our buttonholes. Once we fold over the seam allowance, these will be hidden underneath and eventually we will cover these with buttons. So we've turned our old real buttonholes into new fake ones. Now we need to add interfacing to our new seam allowance. We already have interfacing on the edges. So I'm going to measure between these along the cuff to figure out how much I need. About 8 inches. 
So we cut out a piece of interfacing 8 inches by 1.5 inches and we iron that in place. Repeat for the other sleeve. We press the creases on each edge of the sleeve. We turn over our seam allowance to our new hemline and press that down. Now we need to sew our edges. We have a thinner edge and a wider one. The thinner edge is simple. We fold it over on the seam allowance with the right sides together and we pin it in place. The wider edge of our placket is a little more complicated. We need to make a mitred corner to reduce extra bulk. We open up our cuff and we can see these lines where we pressed over the edge and the hem of our cuff. In the centre of the cross where these two lines meet, we make a mark. We fold over our button flap and where the edge meets the hem line, we make a mark. We fold over our hem and where the hem meets the edge, we make a mark. So we have one mark in the centre and one on each edge. We then mark out two lines from the centre to each edge. We fold our cuff over from that centre point. Then we match up those two marks we made along the edges. We put in a pin, using those lines we drew to make sure we're straight. Don't worry if these two edges aren't exactly square, that's fine. Now we're ready to sew. On the thinner edge we stitch along the old seam line and on the thicker edge we sew along this line we just drew. We take the thin edge of our cuff and push it right side out. Here's the line we stitched along our thicker edge. We cut off the excess fabric, leaving about half a centimetre and taking off a little extra in the corner. We then turn it right side out. Giving us a neat mitered corner. We go around the cuff with an iron, pressing those corners and the hemline. And repeat for the other sleeve. And now it's time to attach the lining. We turn our jacket inside out. And here we can see the safety pin we put in earlier, stopping our lining from twisting. Now we need to cut our lining to size. This is where our original sleeve cutoff comes in handy. We line this up with the bottom of our lining. And we use this as a guide to cut our lining to the correct length. We do this for both sleeves. You will find that part of the lining has been closed with a top stitch. In some jackets, such as mine, you will find that only one sleeve has the top stitching, in which case we will have to pull both sleeves through the same hole. In some jackets you will find top stitching in the centre back lining. This might be easier to pull both sleeves through. In my jacket I only have the top stitching in one sleeve, so I'm going to have to pull both sleeves through that hole. We find our top stitching and unpick the seam. We reach into that hole we've just made coming down to the cuff. We line up the centre seams on both the outer fabric and the lining. We turn each of these inwards and we pinch those together and keeping hold of them, pull them back through the hole. And we put a pin in, keeping it in place. Then we pin all the way around the cuff and we stitch out a fabric and lining together. fabric is attached. Here we have our button placket. We turn our cuff around and find the centre seam. We fold over the seam allowance and we place a small tack to help keep it in place. Keep the tack to the seam allowance so that the thread doesn't show through on the outside. Now we're ready to turn our sleeve right side out. 
we simply push it back through the hole in the lining. Now for the second sleeve, I reach into that hole in the lining, up the sleeve, through the back, and through the other sleeve down to the cuff. Just like the other sleeve, we line up the centre seams. We fold lining and outer fabric inwards, pinch them together, and keeping hold, pull them all the way through the lining and out through that hole in the other sleeve. We put in a pin to keep it in place, pin all the way around the cuff, and so. Again we find the centre seam and put in a tack keeping it in place. We push the cuff back through the hole in the lining, then we reach through the sleeve pulling it right side out. And now we close up that hole in the lining with a top stitch. We can now pull our sleeve right side out and remove these safety pins because we don't need them anymore. We give our cuffs one final press, lining included. And now we can sew on our buttons. I sew on all four of my buttons using the same thread, working my way up through the fabric. With the last button on, I make a couple of knots, pull my needle through the fabric, and cut. And we're done. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.